click, click. Have you ever been one of those people where you tell your friends, oh, I've been really lucky. My roll of film's got 40 frames on it or 45 frames on it. I've gone past the 38 mark and I'm still taking pictures. How amazing is that? They realised I was a, a YouTuber, an influencer, and it's like, damn you YouTubers. Today we are talking film. I'm going to tell you the 10 biggest mistakes new film users use, not from me, but from a local camera shop that sees these mistakes coming in every day when people send their film in to get developed. If you're a film photographer or you know someone who's just getting into film, please send them this video and it may save them a lot of upset. Let's get started. Matt here from MrLife.com. Hello and welcome. This is a film video so I would have liked to have grown a moustache or wore some slightly more hipster style clothes. I don't have one of those cool like roll up like woolly hats people wear so apologies for that but nonetheless this will be a full film packed video. I visited a local camera shop, they realised I was a, a YouTuber, an influencer and it's like damn you YouTubers or you influencers because of you guys people are shooting film again and they don't know what they're doing. And these are the biggest mistakes you guys are making when you are loading your first roll of film. If you're new here, welcome. Normally we talk about Leicas and quite geeky stuff, but today we're talking about much cheaper normal film cameras. So new film user, yes, I'm talking to you right there. You saw a cool YouTube video where some cool hipster person was shooting Portrait 400 or Portrait 800. And you're like, amazing, I really want to do this. So you go to your local camera shop, you buy yourself a roll of Portra 400. You've just got a camera from a thrift store. You're really excited, you're like, got a camera for £10 or £50 or $100, whatever the price may be, a reasonably low priced camera. It's your first film camera. So you need to load the film into the camera. You work out how to open the back, you're like, right, it looks like the film goes in here. It looks like it's more or less in, great. And then you shut the back, you're like, great. You, say, you saw what they did on YouTube, you like the advanced it a few times. Well, it's locked up. This is the problem with those Minolta's. You don't have such problems with a Leica. I'll be right back. My Minolta seems to have jammed up, so I've got a Leica. So, let's try again. You buy yourself a cheap camera from the thrift store. Our cameras are actually the cheapest Leica camera. So what do you do? You bought your film, you're all excited, you pop the back, ball thing at the end, you're like, oh, la la la. The YouTuber did that, so you lift it up, you put your roll of film in, you roll it across the back, you stick it down the end, you're like, yeah, that looks about right. Shut it up, you're like, cool, push that down, and you're like, right, cock the shutter to get it. <laughs> this one's working, <laughs> it was off. Okay, you cock the shutter, you're like, he said, he said, cut the shutter a few times, then you're ready to go. And then he go out shooting with your friends, and then all day you like click. You're like, oh, this is amazing. It feels so nice. It sounds so good. Click. Click. There's one massive problem. What did they do wrong when they loaded the film? Assuming they loaded it correctly. What was the number one mistake that beginners make when loading film? What is the check you should do? before you start shooting film? The answer is, you need to check if the rewind crank lever is moving when you're advancing the shutter. So let's try that again. Advance the shutter, take, advance the shutter, take. This is not moving, that means your film is not loaded correctly. And when you take your film out at the end, you can have a whole roll of blanks. This is the number one problem the camera shop sees when people, especially newbies, take their film to get developed. We're all excited and they've just got a roll of blanks. So if ever you are still taking pictures and you've passed the 38 exposure mark, and let's say you've counted past 40, don't send the film to the lab. There's a really, really high chance that you didn't load the film. Just check the rewind lever. If there's any tension on the rewind lever, there's a good chance the film was loaded correctly. If the rewind lever just spins around, then the film's not loaded, so you've not wasted any film, you just haven't got any pictures. So open the back, collect the film properly, then try again. That way you don't waste the film by sending it to the lab and getting a roll of blanks. Bonus tip. This can happen to the best of us. It happened to me with my Lycra M6 when I was teaching in New York, I think 2014. 
recently got the M6 or shooting cine still at night in New York in downtown Manhattan. Can you imagine like how exciting that is for a UK guy that's never been to New York? It's like one off opportunity and I got a roll of blanks because on an M6 you've got those three prongs and the film had pulled out of the prongs. I was used to an M2 or an M3 where the film stays in and you never have that issue. So always check your film, rewind crank is moving before you take any photos once you've loaded the film. Tip number one. Tip number two. When you've shot your roll of film, you come to rewind it, and you're like, oh, let's rewind the film, take it out, take it to the lab, and see what these pictures look like. So you, you get your rewind crank, and it's like, right, it looks like I've got to point it that way. So you like, turn, and it's really tight. You're like, why is it so tight? These old cameras seem less smooth than I'd expect. And you're like, oh, well, I'll just keep turning. You're like, you can feel that then it's hardly moving at all. You're like, why is it not moving? Problem number two is you don't press the rewind button before trying to rewind your film. You will stretch the film, and so you have like a banding along the, uh, the length of the film, like a light banding, which lines up with the sprocket holes where the film is thinner, and you basically stretch your film. Press your rewind button on the camera before you rewind the film. Mistake number three, when people come to rewind their film, they don't look where the direction arrow is on the rewind crank and then just like la 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 and they rewind it the wrong way and then you might think oh no that doesn't feel right so then they start turning it the other way so the film is unwound itself and then you start to rewind it the correct way and what happens is it puts like a 180 degree hard bend in the film which jams the film in the cartridge so again you've jammed up your camera so normally you'll have to take the camera to the, to the shop and, and ask them to say my camera's jammed up can you get my film out please what you could do yourself if you did it at home, again, take your camera to the closet, take out your bent film and your film canister, try and straighten the film and try to rewind it back into the can manually by turning the top of the film canister and then take it to the lab and develop the film, hopefully. So it sounds really simple, but check the direction that you're turning your film rewind crank. It is one of the most common mistakes for new film users. So that was tip three and tip four. Tip three, reversing it just one way. Tip four, doing it both ways, which causes the bend, which makes it even more difficult to get the film rewound into your canister. Mistake number five. Let's say you're, you're having fun with your friends and you're not really thinking about what you're doing. And you're like, oh, let's just open them back and see how much film I've got left. So you pop your back open, mid roll, on a bright sunny day, you're like, oh yeah, the film's the film's still looking okay. It's still going through okay. Obviously, when you take it to the lab, all of those photos are going to be really heavily fogged or pretty much blanked out because the the light exposes your film, and so you lose the photos. This has happened to me many times. I'm normally doing camera reviews for YouTube. I've done about 350, 360 videos. And sometimes I'm not used to the camera for a long time and I forget that there's film in the camera. I can't know, there's no film in there. I open the film back, I see the film and I'll lose probably four frames from opening the film back in reasonably overcast lighting. If it's a sunny day, you'll probably lose even more. So even if you're opening your back, you won't lose everything. You'll just lose that section of film where it was exposed to the lighting. So again, check your rewind crank tension before opening your film back. Common problem number six, you've taken your 36 exposures, you get to 37, you're like, great. You get to 38 and you're like, <laughs> and you're like, can't quite get it to advance anymore. And then you're like, and it suddenly goes, you're like, ah, done. And you've basically just ripped your film off your spool. So when your film gets tight, never ever force your camera because you're just gonna rip the, spool, the film off the spool which then means you can't rewind your film. So just to recap, when it, when you film, you like advance, take, advance, take, advance, take, and you like, and you won't advance, that means your film's finished. <laughs> At this point, press the rewind button, check the rewind direction, start rewinding your film. Problem number seven. Let's say you just got lucky, you've gone to your local thrift store, maybe you found a cheap TLR camera. This is actually a very, very good TLR camera link the video below or maybe a cheap vintage folding camera you put your cheap camera and you're like right let's take some cool photos like the cool youtubers 
not like me, I'm not a cool YouTuber. <laughs> so you're like, right, what do they shoot? They shoot Portra 400 or Portra 800. So you buy yourself a pack of Portra 800, which costs, what, I don't know, $80, quite a lot. You load that in your $10 camera that you've never tested and then hope to get some amazing photos. Can you see what the problem is with this scenario? Why would you put like the equivalent of high octane gasoline in your crappy small less than one litre car? There's no point putting the best film in a really cheap camera that you've never tested. It doesn't need to be medium format like this. It could be a cheap point and shoot. I know many modern film shooters are point and shoot guys. Uh, these little Olympuses are very popular as I understand. Doesn't matter which camera it is, big or small, if it's the first time you've ever used a camera, don't waste your money and put Portra 400 or 800 or 160 into a cheap camera. First test it with some cheap film. I know no film is cheap now, but don't use the most premium film you can get. Test it, then if it looks good, then you can buy some more expensive film if that's the, the look you're going for. I just want to stop the video for a second and say a huge thanks to my awesome patrons. Many of us are film shooters and on our recent meetup some of the patrons only brought film cameras which I thought was really amazing. If you love film and you want to be part of a film community feel free to join our Patreon. Back to the video. Problem number eight, people buy very expired film and then expect to get good photos. This film was expired in 2014 but the problem with buying expired film you don't know how it's been treated. Obviously try and ask the seller but if it's just stored in a warm room you're not going to get the best results so when you take the film to the lab assume you're going to get pretty rubbishy pictures because you are using expired film so if you want the best results from your camera use fresh film not expired film that said i do use a lot of expired film myself it is more affordable and you can still get great results ideally if you buy cold stored film rather than just film that you found on a, a car boot sale or in a thrift store if you are shooting expired film, expect to see more grain, kind of murky, muddy colours, less detail, loss of shadow detail, and bad colours is the most common thing that I see when I've used over-expired film. We're almost done. Tip number nine. Unlike digital photography, where you expose to the highlights, film photography you expose to the shadows. With that being said, there's no point buying a roll of film and then going and shooting it in the dark with available light only. You're only going to get very, very grainy, very low detail, very poor quality photos. Yes, it's fun to shoot in, say, blue hour or in, say, like a Manhattan, like I mentioned earlier, in areas in the city where there's a lot of available light from, say, neon signs and things like that. But if you're just shooting in dark areas for the sake of dark areas, you'd be better to shoot digital film is not at its best shot in the dark. <laughs> I still need to tell myself this sometimes. I share nice photos online but I don't share the crappy ones and that's because sometimes I may have shot and the, the conditions were just too dark to shoot film and so the, the photos were not as good as I needed to be able to share on social media. So yeah, note to self, don't shoot film in the dark. Tip number 10. This is for Leica users or range finder camera users. With the range front of cameras, you're looking through this window, not through your lens. So you're all excited, you've loaded your film, you go to take your pictures, I'm just checking there's not film in, <laughs> there's no film in. Advance of camera, take, you're like, oh, you look amazing. So you photograph the model as I normally photograph models. You're like, yeah, stay there, yeah, yeah, oh, you look so good, yeah, yeah. And then the model's like, are you not supposed to take the lens cap off? And you look, oh yeah. If your lens cap is on, you're not going to get any pictures and it's very easy to do with the range finder camera because as I say, you look through here, not here. If you don't have the luxury, let's say, of shooting another person and you're just shooting landscapes, you could shoot the entire roll with the, the lens cap on and never even notice. So I would say if you say doing street photography, rather than putting the lens cap on, off, on, off between every picture, get yourself a UV filter, leave the UV filter on the lens and then don't use a lens cap would be my top tip. I think we need a bonus tip. Bonus tip, can you see another problem with this setup? If you saw my recent video on chimping is good, that's a luxury if you've got a digital camera. If you've got a film camera, 
you're going to be more disappointed. The problem with this setup and the problem with some vintage range finder cameras, if that's your thing, you need to extend the lens before you take your picture. As you just saw, I didn't have the lens extended, so all those photos would have been out of focus despite looking in focus when you look through the rangefinder. If ever you've got a collapsible lens, I would recommend leaving it locked out throughout all your photography and only collapse it when you're putting it away for storage. That way, one, you can't forget, and two, you're always going to get all your photos, hopefully, in focus. Bonus tip number two, this may sound very obvious to some of you, but you don't need Leica cameras, despite me being a, a Leica channel, and I love my Leica cameras. I also use Nikons. This is my cheapest Nikon, it's a Nikon FG20, and it takes fantastic pictures, especially when you pair it up with an amazing lens like this, the Voigtlander 90 Apo. Option number one, the second super cheap camera I have is the Minolta X300. This camera with this super cheap 45mm f2 lens took my most popular photo I've ever taken. So that beats my like M11 photos, that beats my Hasbad X2D photos, that beats my medium format film photos, that beats my medium format digital photos when I used to shoot medium format digital on a Hasbad X3D. It beats everything. And it was shot with a 50 pound ish camera with a 50 pound ish lens. So it's what you do that counts, but you then need to load your film correctly and rewind your film correctly to see those pictures, to be able to make those amazing pictures. Bonus tip number three to finish as a YouTuber and I guess an influencer, I must put my hands up and say I am guilty of this. The camera shop could not understand why certain cameras would sell really well and then other cameras equally as good would sell for a quarter of the price and take exactly the same pictures. We're talking about film cameras. Probably the number one culprit that he sees is everybody buying the Canon AE-1 program because it's such a popular YouTuber camera. People see my YouTube and then they think, oh, I need to buy that camera. SLRs all pretty much do the same kind of thing. It doesn't matter if it's Minolta or Canon or Nikon or there is it, <laughs> Leica they all roughly do the same thing. So you don't need to buy the camera that the YouTuber says. Again, I'm really guilty of this. I talk a lot about Leica 3 vintage cameras. They are absolutely amazing, but then equally, you don't need to buy exactly the same camera as I do. I just try to tell you the cameras that I enjoy using the most. So with that, thanks so much for watching. If you lasted until the end, please share this with your film camera friends. If you're part of one of those cool film camera hipster clubs, please post this in your forum or your website to help more film camera users. As I say, the camera shop was amazed at how many people screw up the, the film process, mostly putting film in and taking film out. Thanks for watching and keep shooting film.